Brian Henson had an agenda. He wanted to prove that the Henson Company could make really high-end makeups on fast turnaround. It was the most ambitious project I think Australia had ever seen in television to that point. I don't know if the show could have been made anywhere else for the budget and have as much of the production values end up on screen as they did. We had a couple of Rigels. We had the actual mechanical Rigel that was full service, all working. And then we had a doll version that we could kind of throw over cliffs. And I think we did that quite regularly. He was like our little diva on set. We, could, we had to be really careful with Rigel. I'm nobody's puppet. When kids would come to set, children of the people working on the show, they would never look at the six puppeteers on the ground. They would look dead in the eyes of the puppet. And it was so touching, really sort of melted my heart to see how important imagination is to a kid and how they live in that world where they want to believe that the creature is real. It wasn't hard for the actors though either to believe that these creatures were real because they were so beautifully designed. Finally, we see John Crichton propose on a boat to Aaron Sun only to have them both be killed. And that was potentially going to be the end of Farscape forever. We were sad for the fans. We were sad for everyone who worked on the show because we were a family, the cast and crew, by that point. There was a massive response from the fans, and I think really this show was on that first wave of the internet becoming a very powerful tool for audiences. Brian Henson said, were it not for the power of these fans, we would not have been able to make Peacekeeper Wars. But I think there's a bigger audience out there for Farscape than we, than we really know even to this day.